What's up guys? So this video is going to go out to those of you who want to know what you can do to get really good sound out of the Bacart S300 and S400 monitors. That's right, we're going to tackle both speakers in the same video and we're going to cover as many bases as we can. That way you know A, what to expect when you bring them home and B, what you can do to really maximize the performance of these speakers within your own living situation. So let's get right to it. <laughs> Alright, so let's kick things off with some good news. And the good news is that despite how menacing these speakers look, both the 400s and the 300s are incredibly easy to work with. I mean, it really doesn't take a whole lot of sweat equity in order to enjoy good performance out of them. But if you want the best sound, then all you have to do is treat them like a set of proper hi-fi loudspeakers, starting with the fact that you're going to want to spread them relatively far apart. And if possible, you need to give them room to breathe. This means keeping them a couple feet away from any wall boundary and any tall, heavy piece of furniture. Now what I want to do, though, is move on to specifics and cover things that you should do regardless of your environment. So let's get right to that. Alright, so step number two, if you want the most natural sounding tonal balance out of these speakers, then you'll have to resist the urge to point them directly towards your listening position, because both of these speakers were designed to sound best whenever their drivers are facing directly out into the room and or with very minimal toe-in. Now what you're going to hear is something that's going to be very natural, you're still going to get huge imaging, the off-axis response is still going to be great, and you're still going to get a great center image. Now, the only time you really want to toe them in is if you want a more forward and aggressive sound. Alright, so step number three. If you're going to spend over $1,000 on a pair of bookshelf speakers, then don't cheap out on stands like this. Get something that's actually pretty good. Now, Bacart makes their own stands, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend buying them unless you really like the aesthetics, because at the end of the day, Bacart designed the stands with aesthetics in mind and not performance. In fact, if you look at the base of the stands, it's very thin and it's very unstable. So if you have pets, if you have kids, or if you're clumsy, there's a good chance that those stands are going to tip over. Now, for those of you in the U.S., for the same amount of money, for a little over 200 US dollars, you can buy a set of stands from Pangea. They're called the DS400 Heavy Duties. They're much better built, they're much more stable, and quite frankly, they perform better than Bacart's own stands. So buy those. And when it comes to stand height, you want to stay between 26 to 28 inches. <laughs> Alright, so when it comes to equipment matching, let's start off with the S300s. Now those speakers tend to sound best with gear that reside on the clear, if not dry side of neutral. So a good affordable match would be the PS Audio Sprout version 2, or if you have just a little bit more money and you want a higher end sound, go with the Dan's Minuetto Integrated Amplifier at a thousand bucks. Now when it comes to the S400s on the other hand, that's where things get a little more interesting because so far I've yet to come across a combination that doesn't work well with them. Now, now, Bacard Audio says that they really like a lot of power and that the more power you give them, the better, but I don't necessarily agree with this. I think a good 50 to 60 watt per channel amp with average music listening habits and an average sized room is going to be enough for most people. Now, obviously, if you have a big room or you like to crank the volume, then yes, you're going to need to be at an amp at 120 watts per channel or higher. And it's also important to note that when it comes to equipment matching, I feel like the plateau for the S300 is around a $1,000 to $1,500 per component range. Whereas with the S400s, you can have a $10,000 stack of electronics or higher, and the S400s are still not going to sound completely outclassed. So the performance envelope on the 400s and their ability to reward you with better gear is going to be significantly higher than the S300s. Alright, so when it comes to wall boundary placement, it's important to note that both of these speakers produce a lot of energy. So ideally, you do want to give them at least two feet of space between any side or back wall wall boundary. But let's face it, in the real world, this isn't always possible. So the question is, how do they perform when you have to place them near a wall? And this is basically how it goes. With the S400s, as long as you can give them at least, I would say, six inches of space from any wall boundary, you're going to be okay. You're not going to get the best performance out of them. Yes, the bass is going to slow down a bit. The mid-range is going to become a little bit thick. But otherwise, you're still going to get good performance. The S300, if you do not plug that port, then things are going to get pretty boomy pretty quickly. But here's the funny thing. 
if you plug the port onto S300, it does what you'd want it to do, which is it takes the bass, dials it down a notch without changing the tone of the speaker, which is incredibly unusual. And this leads me to how these speakers perform in the desktop environment. All right, so a number of you have been asking me how do S400s perform in a desktop environment that's similar to what you see right here. And the answer is, they're good, but they're not great. And I say that because the S400 is the kind of speaker that really sounds best when you put some distance between yourself and the actual loudspeaker. And a lot of that has to do with the waveguide. Once you actually sit up close to this speaker, you'll be able to localize the individual drivers at play. And the overall sound quality and integration isn't going to be as good as it could be. Still, if this is going to be your first rodeo, so to speak, then you will probably enjoy what you hear. But you know what? There's a Bacart speaker that's even better for this application and let's talk about them right now. Whoa, wait a second. So you're saying that these large rear ported speakers are not only better than the S400s in this environment, but also just good period? Well, <laughs> hear me out. So to set this up for you, one of my reference points for the past seven years for this system has been the Harbeth P3 ESR. I like it for its form factor and I like it because the voicing of that product is almost perfect for this kind of environment. And it's the same reason why I like the S300. Okay, well the form factor is not quite there, but the voicing of the speaker is when you sit up close to it, it's surprisingly well composed. Driver integration remains intact. The imaging is borderline holographic when you're up close to it. And most importantly, the voicing of the speaker is almost perfect for this type of listening because most of the people who have a setup like this, they're not just listening to high res files. They're on YouTube, they're playing games, and I feel like these speakers are perfect for that kind of environment. Now you may be asking, well, what about the bass? It's clearly gonna be overwhelming. Well, yep, but remember I, when I told you about the port stuffing thing? This is how I discovered it, is because, yeah, there was a little too much bass. I plugged the port expecting, of course, the tuning of the speaker to change, which, yeah, you'll get less bass, but usually everything goes to crap, regardless of the loudspeaker you're doing it to. But with the S300s, I noticed, whoa, it did exactly what I wanted to. It tamed the bass just enough to where I still got that full range presentation, but it was no longer overwhelming. And that was the secret sauce to getting these to work. So in a desktop environment, believe it or not, for just pure fun listening, the S300s are pretty good. And as I said before, you wanna pay attention to the stands that you put these speakers on. Don't put them on a beer can or a coffee cup or something like that. I use some ISO acoustic stands. I've also built my own. You don't have to spend crazy amounts of money. Just use something decent. And uh, that's pretty much a wrap. All right, so that's it. Hopefully you took something useful away from this video. If there's something that I did not address, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to provide an answer for you. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.